Quick tip for you today, using echo to animate patterns. Usually most shapes are animated using repeaters. The usual method is make a line, then add a repeater, and then now you can do things. You can animate the position, you can add more copies, you can add an offset, and then you can do scale it. That's pretty cool actually. I want to show you another way. The typical method. You can animate patterns another way, and it's arguably more fun. Here's an example. You can see it looks like it's a 3D situation, like you're almost going through a tunnel. I've just animated a path from the bottom left to the top right of the screen. And then I've added echo. That is the secret source to this. Once you get it from bottom left to top right, so it's left the screen, then the echo comes in, and then my comp region becomes whatever the echo is now. And you can see this just keeps going. So it's easy to get these loops. You can also pre-compose this and then add some other effects to it. You get these results. I've also just thrown in a blurred version of it where I scaled it down a little bit. So that's 200% and that's 195. So it's just a bit smaller to give this illusion of depth. So you can see it's a bit smaller at the edges. I want to show you how to do this. How to make your very own. Let's try animate this one. Thank you, Steve, for your photo. And let's get drawing. Let's go to two seconds. That's about here and here. Path keyframe there, go to zero seconds. We are now looking at about there, but then we need to add another key in the middle. I'm going to do that. I'm just guessing where the pattern's going to be going. Once again, it's just a reference shape. You don't have to match this perfectly. Go to four seconds and we're going here. And then that goes about there. And I'm just going to take the whole shape and just push it to the right a bit, just so it's off screen. So let's see how that looks. So here it gets all hard because it's curved there and it's curved there, but when it's in the middle, it goes to a point which looks disgusting. So let's keep that curve going so it stays nice and beautiful throughout. For this tutorial, this is good enough. Animating the stroke width. We can also play with the stroke. There's also something you can't do with shape repeaters. Let's make it thick. Maybe we can taper it a bit. Bit of depth, you know? Stroke width will be like whatever it was to begin with. And that could be 45. So now you can see it gets thick in the middle, thin at the edges. That looks pretty cool. Echo! Now what you do, echo. Need to give it more copies to begin with. Then you want to hold control. Can you see already? Can you see the power? You space it out with this time difference. And I guess you want to keep it relatively similar to the reference you've got behind you. If I just make this a little bit thinner, because that was a bit nuts. And now I can also finesse how that end shape looks, because I can see, look where it all goes. I can see where it went. So can you, can you see the power of this? This is gorgeous. Echo by default is set to add. So when red overlaps red, you get this beautiful blending that starts happening. And you don't get this with shape repeaters either. Everything is the same. Or oh, I could be wrong, let me know. It's loop time. So now you've got the pattern. Let's make it white. Make the background black. This is a huge comp. Whoa, we don't need it that big. 1080, isn't it? So we've got this happening. Gorgeous, mate. But you don't want this beginning part. This is the pre-roll. You want to kind of drag your work area with the shift key so it snaps. And then now that, that's the work area. Oh yeah, okay, you might not have enough copies. Just up your copies. And now it's looping. That loops perfectly. Also, you can slow this down. Maybe that's too fast. You select your keys, hold Alt or Option, and now that'll be a bit slower. But you know, it's fine. You just space it out. I mean, you can spread these out like this and you add a few more key copies, but this is the idea. And then let's get this pre-comped. Time remapping. Key at 10 seconds, 20 seconds as well. And you delete the initial key. You delete the last key. And then that can go at the beginning. Loop that. And that will go forever. Any frames you render here will also render here because you're just rendering the first 10 seconds and then everything just loops after that. So it's quite an efficient way to do it. And then we'll come put a blur on it. And this can be a bit smaller. Continuously rasterize that. Let's try the value thing. Let's make it really thin. Let's try value divided by three. So it just takes what the keys are and brings them down. Divides whatever the keyframes were. 45 divided by three is 15. You want to make it gray. So then you actually have room to blend them together. If I did a copy of this, go like this. Just try some different things to get something cool. Having a drink of water, very important. So this is quite a simple example, but it gives you the fundamentals and shows you what's possible with the Echo plugin. Snapshots. Echo is usually quite a heavy plugin. This 10 seconds taken so long. So what you do is, okay, I'll take a snapshot and then I'll go forward a bit and I'll see if that lines up. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, let's try that. So we've got bank. Where was the previous one? Oh, if I just do this. 
This is the beauty of it. So Echo, yeah, it might be a heavy plugin, but if you can use Take Snapshot and Show Snapshot, you can find very quickly the little loop moments. And then that way, this really heavy plugin is actually quite efficient because you're only rendering part of a second, but you're using that for about 10 seconds of loop or whatever. If you want to keep that as is, I remember what we did in the other video. Loop in plus loop out minus value. And that should just go forever now. That's just going to go forever. Helpful tip that. Happy Tuesday.